Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Ann Reardon and today after an overwhelming number of requests we're going to make a YouTube play button dessert. One of the biggest questions I had from the Twitter dessert was can I use cake for the logo instead of cremo? So we'll use cake in the middle of this one which as you can see doesn't give as sharp a line as you'd get with using the cremo but it is easier to do. Firstly, bake a sponge cake. You can use a packet mix, you can use a recipe that's on the website, howtocookthat.net, or you can buy a cake, it's up to you. Then print out the YouTube play button in a size that will fit your container, and then cut out the arrow from it and use that as a guide to cut lots of triangles from the sponge cake. Once you've cut them, you need to trim them to make sure that they are straight on the top and the bottom, and we also want to take off that darker coloured cake. I'm making more triangles than I need here. We only have a few people coming over for dessert, so I'm not going to fill the container all the way to the top with the mousse, but I am putting the cake all the way to the top, so I don't have to guess exactly where the mousse is going to come up to. Line up your triangles of cake and then push a skewer into the center to hold them together and then place that cake down the center of your container and use a knife to push the base of it into the right position. Then take some tape and put it over the skewer and then down on each side of the container. Turn the container and repeat that going over in the opposite direction and that will hold the triangle right in the center of the container where you need it. I might make another YouTube cake later that's a normal cake but with fondant decorations on the outside representing some of the different channels. What YouTube channels do you want to see on that cake? Which ones do you think should be on it? Big channels, small channels, what are your favorites? Let me know in the comments. Now you need to put this cake triangles in the freezer and the reason for that is we need it to be super cold so when we pour our mousse over the top the mousse doesn't soak into the cake. To make the mousse put your frozen or fresh raspberries in a saucepan, add a quarter of a cup of water and stew them until that fruit starts to fall apart. Pour all of that through a sieve and then use the back of your spoon to push through all of that juice and it will take a little while to do this. Just keep going until you're left with like a slurry of seeds in the sieve and all the juice in the bowl. Take two jugs and measure out 300 mils in one and 150 in the other. All of the recipe quantities that you need for this are on the website howtocookthat.net in grams and ounces and cups and everything and I'll put a link to that recipe in the description just below this video. We'll use 300 mils of the puree to make the mousse and the other 150 mils we'll use in the glaze. To make the mousse you'll need gelatin, water, egg yolks and sugar, cornstarch, cream, the raspberry puree that we made earlier, white chocolate and more cream. Add the cold water to the gelatin and stir that through until it's smooth and then leave that to absorb all of that water. Whisk together the sugar and the egg yolks, then add the corn flour into that and mix it in really well. Place the raspberry puree and the cream into a saucepan and heat that over high heat until it starts to boil. Then whisk in your egg yolk mixture, return it to the heat and bring it back up to the boil and stir that constantly while it's boiling for at least a minute. This allows it to thicken and it also lets all of those starch granules burst so that you don't have a floury flavour to it and so that they're nice and clear. Remove it from the heat and stir through the gelatin and the heat of the raspberry mixture is going to melt that gelatin down and keep stirring until all the lumps are gone. Now pour it through a sieve onto the white chocolate and the sieve will just help get out any little raspberry seeds that we missed and any little lumps. If you had any egg white in with your yolks, the white cooks faster and that would give you lumps there. It will get all of those out because we want our mousse to be completely smooth in your mouth when you're eating it. You don't want to get a, a lump of something. Stir through the melted white chocolate until it's really well combined. And now we need to make it a brighter YouTube red. So to do that, I'm adding some liquid red red food colouring, you can use gel colour if you have that and once you're happy with the colour we just want to leave that to cool down to room temperature. You don't want to put it in the fridge because that will set the gelatin, we just want it to cool to room temperature so we can fold in the cream without it melting. Once it's cooled whip the remaining cream to soft peaks and then fold that through. Take the cake out of the freezer and pour that mousse straight into the container. Now, as I said, we've froze the cake so that that mousse isn't going to soak into the cake. And you want to put the mousse straight back into the freezer and leave it overnight to set. To make our glaze, you'll need white chocolate, cream, gelatin, corn flour, sugar, 
raspberry puree that we made earlier and glucose syrup. Add three tablespoons of the puree to the gelatin and stir it through till it's smooth. Set that aside and then add three tablespoons of the puree to the corn flour and mix, mix, mix that until it has no lumps and then pour it into the rest of the puree and stir it through. Heat your glucose syrup and sugar with a quarter of a cup of water until all the sugar is dissolved and it's bubbling and hot like this. Pour in your cream and bring it back up to a boil. Now add the corn flour mixture and like I said before you want to boil that and keep it boiling for at least a minute so that all those starch granules can burst and it thickens slightly. Remove it from the heat and add your gelatin and stir until it's dissolved and then pour that through a sieve onto the white chocolate. Stir that white chocolate through, add some red colouring to brighten it up and now we want that glaze to cool down. If the glaze is quite hot when you pour it over your dessert it will just melt the top layer of the dessert and then slide off. That's not what you want obviously so we want to cool it down to room temperature. For the base of the dessert, crush some chocolate biscuits or cookies, depending where you are in the world. The recipe that I used for this is on the website, but you can use store-bought ones if you prefer. Melt your chocolate. We don't need this to be tempered, just melt it. That's fine for this. And then mix through your crumbs into the melted chocolate. Spread that out on some baking paper, roughly making it into a rectangle shape big enough for your dessert to sit on. And then top it with another sheet of baking paper and use a rolling pin to make sure it's really smooth and flat. Check your dessert will fit on top and then place it in the fridge to set. Take your frozen dessert and place it in a sink of hot water and this will melt the outside layer of the gelatin on the dessert and make it easy to get it out of the container. Remove the tape and the excess cake and then use the skewer to pull the dessert out from the container. If it's not coming out easily just pop it back into the sink of hot water for a little bit longer and then try again. Use a knife to cut off that excess bit of cake and then pull the skewer out of the centre. Place some glasses upside down in a container and rest the dessert on top. The end of the dessert that was at the bottom of our container is rounded here, so I want to trim up the other end to make it match. And you might need to do the same with yours, it just depends on the shape of your container. Spoon generous amounts of the glaze over the top and let it all drip down on all the sides. Anything that drips down into the container can be used again. You can just scoop it up and store it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer until you need it. Leave the glaze to firm up a little and while you're doing that trim the chocolate base to about the right size. We can trim more off later so it's better to make it slightly bigger than you think you'll need and then cut it off once you've got the dessert on top. Flip the baking paper over so that you're putting the base onto the serving platter and then peel the paper off. Then use a spatula and a knife to very carefully lift up the dessert and transfer it onto the base. I suggest you have them very close together when you're doing that so there's less chance of you dropping it. And then use another knife to help you ease those out from underneath. Use your knife to trim up the base to just the right size and then decorate the top of your dessert using chocolate and push it down into the glaze so it stays in place. To cut your dessert use a large hot knife and slice all the way through to the base and you can see the YouTube play button in the middle of each slice. Now it's not as sharp as I'd like it to be and if I was making it again I'd probably suggest adding a thin layer of plain buttercream around the cake just before adding it into the container and that way you'd get a sharper edge to the logo. Or you could just use cremo like I did in the Twitter cake recipe and then that's going to give you a nice smooth middle instead of the cake has kind of a holy texture to it. If you liked this dessert make sure you click on the links below to share it. Also give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already click on the subscribe button. I make a new dessert or cake or chocolate video every Friday. Have a great week.